married couples are becoming more similar, researchers have found. Researchers found people with the same genetic traits such as height, and those with similar education levels are increasingly choosing similar mates. However, they also discovered this does not seem to be driving changes in the gene pool. While there is a tendency for people who are genetically similar along key dimensions to marry each other, there does not seem to be any increase in this tendency, despite what some people may fear about inequality getting baked into our genes, said Dalton Conley, a professor of sociology, medicine and public policy at New York University and author of the study. Ditto for how many kids folks are having, while there are genetic associations, they appear to be stable over time. The researchers wanted to find if the gene pool was being affected, for instance, in a scenario where dull people have a propensity to marry each other and have many children, while short people likewise married but had fewer children. If we assume that the height of these people reflects the influence of their DNA, one might expect to see more genes for tallness in the population over time. As we get better and better measures of genotypes with bigger and bigger subject pools, it will be important to reproduce this study to keep tabs on how social forces, like rising income inequality or changing marriage norms, may be affecting us at the population genetics level, Conley said. We're asking how spouses are alike, how this is affecting the number of children they have, and then asking how both of these are changing over time, said Ben Doming, an assistant professor in the Graduate School of Education at Stanford University and one of the authors of the study. We see an increasing stratification across society in terms of mating and fertility, but it's not corresponding to changes in the underlying genetic signature. If you just look at how people select for similar spouses, you might think there are changes in how genetics are related to decisions regarding marriage and fertility, Doming said. Our point with this study is that none of the trends in the observed rates, height, for example, seem to be associated with changes in the relevant genetics. If we just had the phenotypic information and we tried to use that to infer what was happening genetically, we may get the wrong answer. Researchers analyzed genetic data involving 4,686 non-Hispanic white adults and their spouses. For each participant, they tested for genetic patterns that have been associated with four different traits, educational attainment, height, body mass index and depression. Genetic aspects of the four traits were defined based on measured DNA. In the twisted ladder structure of DNA, base pairs form the rungs, about 3 billion in total. The vast majority of these pairs are the same across all people, but roughly one in every 300 base pairs is a point at which humans differ. The research team used 1.5 million of these spots of variation along with previous research linking them to the relevant traits, to examine patterns in mating and fertility. The researchers found that spousal genetics influencing education and height are associated. They also saw that pairs with more education and those with taller statures tended to produce fewer children. However, while education was an increasingly strong predictor of the number of offspring and the overall education of that entire family in more recent birth cohorts, these characteristics were not associated with changes in how the genetics of education were associated with these traits.